Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Growing in Grace. I'm Joel and uh, Mike is with me. It's the Joel and Mike Show. Uh, no, we call this Growing in Grace. So we could have called it the Joel and Mike Show or the Mike and Joel Show or the Cap and Breeze Show or the Breeze and Cap Show or something like that. But Growing in Grace just came to us. Actually, it's based on a it's based on a scripture. Most people probably know this, but some of you might not, that the Apostle Peter in one of his epistles, ooh, say that fast, the Apostle Peter in one of his epistles, uh, <laughs> he uh, exhorted people, he encouraged people to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's what we do here on this podcast right here. How's uh, Mike doing this week? Yeah, it's it's uh, you brought back some memories there because when we uh, were on the phone talking about doing this podcast, I think the title of it we hardly spent any time on. Kind of like our programs, um, we <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean we didn't really think that hard about it. It just seemed natural that this is something that we were doing in our own lives, growing in the grace and, and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So that was easy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's a theme that. Uh that God has woven into my life, my own personal life, the idea of growing in grace, the idea of being rooted and grounded in God's grace. And so, like you say, it was just kind of a natural uh, thing, just kind of just came to us. And uh, so here's, here's, we are many years later doing this thing. Well, it's been a, it's been almost a year since we've talked about repentance podcast. I was just looking back podcast number 494. In April of 2015, uh, we talked, <laughs> the, the podcast title was REPENT, in all caps, with an exclamation point. And uh, what we're going to talk about today has something to do with that. I, I think this will be good. It's a, it's a scripture that we're going to take a look at that is very popular in the church today, but we, uh, I guess we're kind of questioning whether it should be popular in the church today. Not that all scripture isn't God-breathed. We're not denying the scriptures, but take a listen, see what we have to say about all this today. Yeah, I mean, last week, even though it wasn't in the title of the podcast, we we did kind of touch on on repentance a little bit last week. But So we're kind of staying in a a similar context here, just with some of what we said last week. But the the scripture that is one of those sacred ground scriptures among religious people, Joel and Christianity, it's 2 Chronicles 7.14, and, and just probably for a lot of people, just saying that uh, reference, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. A lot of people could probably just quote that right right off the top of their head. And we often apply this verse, and we'll we'll read it here in a second. But we, we often apply this piece of scripture to uh, our generation of today. Here's how it goes. Let me read the verse before it as well. Everybody, all together now. Oh, okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's, let's do it in unison. Um, uh, God said, "When I shut up the heavens." so that there is no rain, or command the locust to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. Verse 14. If my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face, if they do that, and turn from their wicked ways, then, and only then, (laughs) will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So in, in our discussions about the reality of, of two different covenants in the Bible, the old covenant, the first covenant given to Israel, and the second covenant or the, the new covenant that, that came through Jesus Christ that replaced the former covenant. And oftentimes we see people getting these covenants mixed up and confused because, and part of that is because we, we, we believe the, the Bible is uh, God's written word. And as you said, Joel, God breathed. And because of that, we, we often sort of jump to this conclusion or make an assumption that everything in there was meant for us since it's, it's all truth. It's all God's word, right? So it's, it's all meant for us in some way, shape, or form. And, and I won't argue with the idea that it's for us, but it doesn't necessarily apply to us directly. And so like in this case, if is a, there's a condition here, if my people 
who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. And then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And if you had the time to go back a chapter and then read through this chapter and maybe even the one after that, you'll kind of begin to get a different frame of mind as to who God is talking to and why he was saying the things that he said, because you'll, you'll find out as you read through some of these verses that he's obviously speaking to people at that time who he was in covenant with, and, and they were with him in a special covenant. We're in a covenant with God, too, in the new, but it was through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ established the covenant with God, and because we're in Christ, that brought us in as, uh, as one who was invited into the covenant because we're in Christ. But the covenant itself was really made between God the Father and God the Son. Here in the first covenant, it was between God and Israel. And so I'm, I'm getting the ball rolling here, Joel, but uh, let's let's pick it up from here. I'll, I'll let you uh, get your two cents in. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the, the difference between the covenants, you know, just knowing that there are two different covenants when we pick up our Bible and when we re- in, in the in the course of history of God's history with mankind, which was from the time that he created Adam. Well, uh, along came the first covenant. And it was a, it was indeed a conditional covenant. It was conditional. You know, God had to keep His part, and the people had to keep their part. You know, and, and the, the thing is, God did keep His part. So the condition was, if the people would keep their part, then yay, everything's good and fine and dandy. The problem was that the people didn't keep their part, and uh, the blood of bulls and goats had to be shed. And really, as we find out in Hebrews, all that the blood of bulls and goats did was it reminded the people of their sins. It didn't really take their sins away. It simply reminded them uh, year after year of their sin. Whereas in Jesus, like you were saying, Cap, this one-time sacrifice, this covenant that God made not with the people, because that covenant failed because the people failed, but God made this new covenant. It was a covenant. It was God's promise to God, the Father and the Son. God's promise to God, and the thing is, is that our forgiveness and our our salvation, our justification, is solid as long as Jesus lives. That's the thing in, in the book of Hebrews that we find out about this covenant. And so as long as Jesus is alive, and guess what? He's alive forever. Then our salvation, our forgiveness, you know, God's forgiveness of us is solid and secure. It's perpetual. I mean, it's it's something that happened one time. Jesus shed his blood once, and it continues forever and ever and ever. And so in Second Chronicles 7 here, where we're reading from, and in all of Second Chronicles 7, what's going on here is under the old covenant. They were forgiven, and then they messed up, and they needed to have sacrifices again. They needed to seek God again. They needed to keep going back over and over and over again uh, in order to receive this forgiveness, in order to get God to hear them again and hear their prayers and be on, his, and be on their side. In the New Covenant today, we're safe, we're solid, we're secure in the one-time sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And so that really helps me to understand what's going on here in Second Chronicles 7, helps me to understand anyway that it shouldn't be something that the church needs to keep doing, because if we're doing that, if we're saying, okay, America, or the world, the people of the world, or the people of this nation, or the people of that nation, if you, who are called by my name, which today, of course, it's Christians, it's believers, if, it see, the the condition has been taken away, (laughs) because it's been all solidified in the promise of God to God, you know, God's steadfastness to himself. Uh, he could swear by no, no one greater, so he swore by himself. And that's where we stand today. Yeah. So in the context of repentance, a lot of time we'll, we'll hear religion telling us, well, we need to repent and we need to do this. We need to humble ourselves, pray, seek the face of God. We think this applies to any believer from any nation, kind of like what you were saying, Joel. And uh, that is not the case here. I mean, the the whole context of this thing is Solomon just got done building the temple. I mean, the the holy temple that we hear so much about, that just got constructed and it was built. And so God, this conversation here that God is having is centered around this new temple that Mm -hmm. was going to be such a special place uh, in, in this covenant that Israel had with God. And in fact, he called it, he, he said it would be a house of sacrifice, a mm. house of sacrifice. 
And it was within these walls or within this temple that we're told, or that Israel was told, to do this in seven, Second Chronicles 7, 14, about praying and seeking the face of God and turning from their wicked ways. But so this, this house of sacrifice, I mean, you talk about a house of sacrifice. Solomon put together a sacrificial offering and dedication of this temple with an offering of 22,000 mm. oxen and 120,000 sheep. Yeah, check I mean, out verse 5. That's where it says that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, prior to leading up to 714. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, it's easy to skim <laughs> over that stuff yeah. when you're just reading, but think about it. 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. And uh, that mm. was, I mean, this, this was quite a celebration. And so, uh, and in fact, God, the, the, the whole thing here is God would hear prayer from this place. God would hear the prayers of his people because he says this after 714, he says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place, in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. So this is what's going on here. This, this is talking about the, the Jewish people under the first covenant, under the law, it's a communication between God to them uh, about prayers and so forth coming from from the temple. And and God proceeded to tell Solomon to do according, uh, you know, he, he piled on here a little bit and says, uh, you know, do according to all that he commanded, including the keeping of his statutes and rules, turning aside from any of the commandments, Joel, turning aside from any of them would result in the need to be seeking the face of God again and asking for his forgiveness all over again. That's just how it was under the old covenant. But what you hit on is exactly right. What, what you were talking about is that under a new covenant, it's not like the first one where we have to seek forgiveness from God over and over again. And I think that's a big part of the problem here with people getting mixed up is they assume that God is still forgiving as if this was something that was still ongoing like it was in the old covenant. But the sacrifice of Christ satisfied that. And uh, so th this is this is really exciting news, you know, understanding that we're not stuck in that, but we've been redeemed from it. And uh, I'm, I'm just I'm just hoping that people can latch on to this and understand that uh, forgiveness is not conditional and it doesn't come from seeking the face of God who now lives in us, by the way. Why are you seeking him? Um, it doesn't come from humbling and, and praying. It doesn't come from any of that. Forgiveness only now has been satisfied and brought to us by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, this really is, like you say, exciting stuff. You know, talking about old covenant repentance, like you were saying there, that they had to be forgiven over and over again. Every time they broke a command, you know, they had to repent, turn from sin, offer a sacrifice, continuously seeking the face of God, all of that stuff. And comparing that with new covenant, once for all forgiveness by the blood of Jesus, that one-time offering that covered all sin, that's what's in store next week on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.